cutscene editor, effects, UI, sound, motion, and others. This is what we use to create our game. Because the Fox engine covers such a wide range, I unfortunately do not have time to touch on each aspect. I would like, however, to focus on the visuals. I will show you an overview of how we go about creating MGS5 using the Fox engine rather than each individual detail. Here is the agenda for today. I will start off showing you how assets are created for MGS5. Next, the lighting artist, Mr. Suzuki, will talk about the lighting, shaders, and camera. And finally, the technical director, Mr. Tago, will go over the graphics engine. Well, let's jump right in. I will be covering how we go about creating assets. Does this picture look familiar? Some of you have probably seen it before. <laughs> this is an actual photograph of our conference room here at Kojima Productions. On our Kojima Productions website, we've asked visitors which image was an actual photograph and which image was rendered in the Fox engine. Here, the image on the left is a photograph, the one on the right is rendered in Fox. Here again, the left image is a photograph, the right rendered in Fox. You can tell which is which quite easily by looking at the differences in the assets. But if you focus on the lighting, they become very hard to distinguish. Promotion was not the goal of making the conference room, but rather to have a good reference for artists to use when dealing with linear space lighting. Linear workflow will be talked about more in the next talk by Mr. Suzuki, but it basically means rendering, taking into account your monitor's camera. It is the foundation of physically based rendering. When working in linear space, the most important and difficult problem we faced was the way to create diffuse maps. Using conventional color maps, the artist's job was only to make a texture look good. In physically based rendering, on the other hand, the artist has to be aware of diffuse reflection. <coughs> to make our texture references, we use a real-world camera and use the captured raw image without correction. Artists are used to creating assets that look good without worrying about detailed parameters, but this would create problems in linear space. So in order to test if the results look natural in linear space lighting, we needed to create a reference model. This model is the conference room. Now I would like to show you the actual Fox engine in action. Please wait just a couple seconds. <coughs> there it is. So this is the actual Fox engine running in real time. Uh, here we're changing some of the view styles. That's a normal map. Here is the specular mask. And here's the roughness map. For the roughness, blacker is glossier, while wi whiter is more of a matte finish. And here is the diffuse albedo map.
This image is being created from values taken from a real photograph. Unlike conventional workflows, textures do not have as much shading or detail applied to them. This image is not something that an artist has created, but simulated based on the reflection values of each surface. Well, let's move the camera around. It sure does look real. While I was playing with the simulation back to the office, one of the programmers was looking over my shoulder watching me do this. He thought we had security cameras set up in a conference room. <laughs> I guess that's a testament to how real this really does look. We frequently use this conference room to check shaders, assets, and the like. Uh, this is a soldier that has appeared in the Phantom Pain trailer. <laughs> That's racist. Uh, I'll explain about the kid uh, in just a little bit. <laughs> uh, this is a soldier that appeared in the Ground Zero stream. Uh, you can see that he looks a bit wet from the rain. Uh, in order to check for the weapons, the artists have created a gun rack here, and here's what it looks like. The tank and helicopter were also shown in the trailer. Because we have a real looking environment, it is easy to spot things that do not look natural in our created assets. If we need to test what something looks like, we just take pictures of it and can quickly and easily contrast what that thing looks like in real life and what it looks like rendered in Fox. These images of cloth and leaves are from the world. The left image is rendered in Fox, the right is a real photograph. We sure do think it looks uh, quite similar. The rendered image looks quite similar to the photograph. And the asset creators can check very easily for any inconsistencies when creating their assets. We are able to keep our textures looking like real life even when using linear space lighting. Texture creation will be touched on by Mr. Suzuki in the next talk. Well, here is the kid I'll touch on. I have talked about how we go about making our textures look real life, but what about our models? I now want to talk a bit about photorealistic modeling. The conference room you have seen rendered in Fox was created using photographs. This character on the other hand was created by 3D scanning. 3D scanning is not a new technology by any means, but it is the first time the Metal Gear Solid series has used it. The model shown on the previous slide was created from, from refining the laser scan, but we are also using a different approach, that of photo-based scanning. To generate a model from a photograph, we used PhotoScan by Agisoft. PhotoScan automatically generates a 3D model using multiple photographs as a reference point. But PhotoScan is not just limited to models. It can also generate textures and camera data as well. There have been tools used in the past to generate a model from a photograph, 
but the quality and accuracy with which this is accomplished has increased dramatically in recent times. <laughs> in order to make uh, one important character for the game, we made a photo real sculpture in Scanlon. The character in game is over 100 years old, so the wrinkles and sags and skin needed to be accurate. Here is what we did. We constructed a clay mold from the actor and then added special effects makeup to the mold to create the final character. Finally, we scanned in the finished mold and stuck the character back into the game. Here is this process in action. Here is the life cast of the model. The model on the right is the original life cast, and the one on the left is the clay press up. As I said previously, we added special effects makeup to the character and scanned it in, but we also did a scan before adding the makeup as well. The person we requested to do the sculpting was Mr. Kazuhiro Tsuji. He is famous in the field of photo real sculpting and has worked on many projects, including in the curious case of Benjamin Button and Looper. Unfortunately, we are un unable to show you what the finished character does look like. We can, however, show you the scan of the clay model before the addition of the special effects. Here and here are some photographs of the model that we used to scan. I want to show you a short clip of this as well. Sometimes we just don't play. There it goes. <laughs> we use PhotoScan to create the 3D model and camera data, and then use soft image to display. <laughs> the blue objects shown around the model are the cameras. The cameras took pictures of the model at these coordinates. The 3D model and textures are then generated from the, these photographs. Many cameras were used in this example, but it is completely possible to scan with less. Here is what the model looks like with textures. Since these textures were generated from the photographs taken, they match the model perfectly. And here is the wireframe. You can even see that detailed features like the wrinkles in the face are kept faithful to the original model. On the left is a photograph of the sculpture, on the right is the image of the 3D scan model. You can see how accurate the scan model is. There is virtually no difference between the original photograph. Alright, I'd like to show you one more quick clip. <laughs> this is an example of how an environmental asset is scanned in PhotoScan. For this specific asset, we place the rock on the turntable, rotate it, and photograph it. We then flipped it over and did the same to get a scan of the rock from all angles. One advantage of doing photo-based scanning is that it creates camera data. You can put the camera data as an FBX file into a 3D tool and can easily modify the textures from the given camera projection. For example, when using the camera data in Mudbox and setting the stencil, we can paint the texture onto the model, matching it exactly. Photoscan can automatically generate textures and in recent versions actually